Hi. So one question I've been asked a few times is how I make my custom DuPont cables. Now, mine aren't very professional, but apart from uh, a couple of early mistakes, they do work. And these things are actually pretty handy for attempting to keep the boards tidy that I'm making. Predominantly because you can make them which are the right pin width and the right length to not have lots of, lots of excess. So I did say I'd uh, make a short video on what I've learnt in making these. So to make a cable, you, there's a few things you need. So I bought a basic DuPont connector and pin set, and then I've kind of been using this as a storage box and, uh, and buying the extra bits as I run out. So for my next step in my CPU build, I need a a free pin cable. So I'm going to make that up now and try and let you know what's what I'm doing. So the pins come on a strip like this. They're either male or female varieties and it's the male ones that uh, plug nicely into a breadboard. These shells are what the pins slide into. They come in sizes from one up to eight that I've seen. I suspect there are probably other sizes out there. And most importantly, there's the DuPont crimping tool. This has receptacles for three different sizes of pin and the standard ones I deal with are just the smallest size. And the other thing I think is useful is um, wire strippers. So one thing you need to do is expose a very small amount of wire from the end of your cable. I do find using ribbon cable that's cut down to the right width is, produces the neatest cables. So I strip off just three or four millimeters of wire from the end. One warning, sometimes I find some varieties of ribbon cable, the insulation is strong compared to the internal conductors and it just ends up using the big mechanical wire strippers just ends up tearing the wires. So in that case, I spread them out and strip them individually. So these just snap off the strip. Okay. Now Let's take a look at the crimp tool itself. All right, now you've got this tiny little gap and you see that the receptacle area inside the crimp tool has two halves, one that's slightly smaller than the other. And if we take a look at the pin, it's got kind of matching separation between the narrow end and the, the bigger end. So what we want to do here is fit the larger end into the gap that's larger in here and have the boundary lined up. And the easiest way I found of doing this is to put it in up high and then just pull it along until it stops. And that fits it fairly snugly. I don't know how necessary it is, but I always twist the ends over. Like many things, this is suddenly a bit harder when you're doing it with your arms stretched out to try and keep it, everything under the camera. Right, so what we want to do is have this larger bit at the top crimp the insulation. And then the narrower bit further down grips the conductor.
one thing to be careful of is where your other wires are going when you're crimping one of the pins because if you get it trapped in here it will completely destroy the insulation and squish it. So this is a, a little bit tricky alignment especially when you're doing it with your arms stretched out but the pin should sit quite comfortably inside the crimp tool until you try and do it on camera when the pins will start flying everywhere. So what I do is I just move, put the wire inside and then just move the insulation a couple of millimetres further in. Then you just squeeze the handle tight. Okay, so that's pretty much bang on. It's like the insulation has been gripped there and then the wire is, is gripped here. Now the biggest mistake I made early on was having the insulation go slightly too far in. So that meant that the lower bit that's designed to grip the wire ended up gripping the insulation and then the wire wasn't tightly gripped. And so occasionally I'd have uh, connections that weren't reliable. bend the pins I've done down and the pins I'm yet of the wires that I'm not currently doing up. So that's three looking good connections I think. One thing I've seen other people do is grip the pin like that so it's held securely inside the, the tool. And then insert the wire. Now I've found that to actually be a little bit more difficult to judge how far in the insulation is. One technique I did find is if I just kind of line up how far in I want the insulation here on the outside and then you poke this in here, it does help you get it right. I do prefer doing it the other way, but um, it's kind of good to try different techniques and experiment with it. So once you've crimped your pins, you need to put them into the shell. So I find with some insulation, it goes in really easily and some it's, it's quite tough. So I sometimes use my tweezers to, to poke the wires in for a female connector or for a male connector like this one. I can just grab a pin with my needle nose pliers and pull it through and you often you just feel, feel it clip into place. Now the 
piece of the connector that sticks up here drops into this recess to uh, hold it securely. So there's the finished cable. Now, this isn't a master class. There's probably uh, better techniques and lots of things I'm doing wrong, but I made a few mistakes when I first started doing this and this is the kind of technique I've come up with and what I've learned and uh, I was asked to share it so I have done. Okay, if you give it a try I uh, hope it works out for you. Goodbye.